This is the Chris Abraham Show. there this is chris abraham season season six episode 30 trente i think it's trente or trente 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 it's not these enough it's not quatre van it's not it's not these nuts <sighs> all right sorry about the noise hopefully that gets i ai scrubbed out let me see make sure that this is running Wow. Wow. Alexa, what is the word in German for 30? Pretty. In Germany. I see. I see. I knew that. Just German is getting further and further away from my knowledge. Makes me very sad. So I see. Sorry about all the noise. Checking for wallet, phone, and keys. Please. Ooh, look. Napkins. Okay. Anyway, welcome to the Chris Abraham Show. This is season six, episode 30. My name's Chris Abraham, and I am going to be being quiet a lot. Hopefully the, uh, what is it called? Hopefully the silence remover will work. Ah, j'espère It is Thursday. It is show day for no agenda. So we'll see what happens. Good morning. Good, thank you. And you? Good. It's a beautiful day out. It's cold, but it's beautiful. Yes, it is. I'm tired. I did a lot. Thank you. Oh, good. You're already productive. It's not even 10 o'clock. I'm not working today at all, but I have the last stage to I did kind of kind of on screen and put that off. See, I think you've forgotten what a day off is. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, I know women like you. The day off is busier than the day on. You're like all the yes. all the things on your to-do list. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoy it. Are you going to be or one? Uh, one. Me too. Thank you. If you were going to go to B, I would have gone with you. Because, you know, it's not like it's that far. <laughs> all kinds of errands, huh? Yes, today's never going to be day we call. No. It'll be, I think you're okay. It'll be in the 40s. 40s? I, I just didn't even want... But it's not going to be like 50s or 60s, yeah, so I think you're fine. Heart. Perfect. After you. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Good luck today. Thanks. Good morning. Have a good day. Thank you. Feel bought. It's kind of the other You're too fast. You're too fast for the door. I know. You're like a rocket ship. I drink my lactic milk, wheat, organic, green tea from Japan. Yeah. When I feel, when I drink this, I feel like, you see, I'm 10, I'm skinny, but when I'm, I drink this every morning. You feel like the Hulk. <laughs> good, 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 good. It's like a vitamin for my bones. No, it's awesome. I need, I need cups and cups of coffee for that kind of energy. Let me tell you something. I cannot drink coffee. Doctor take me out of coffee. Yeah. Because I have acid reflux. Yeah. Terrible acid reflux. Plus, I'm, I have gluten and tolerance. So that would take me off 20 years. I did not drink coffee. I, I, I don't drink coffee. I love coffee, but too bad. I had to argue with my doctor. I gave up, uh, <laughs> I gave up drinking for coffee. So, and only black coffee. So I can't even have okay, milk or anything. Okay, so you don't drink, drink. <laughs> and I also don't drink coffee after 3 p.m. Oh, I good. even taught my barista, the guy at the cafe. I told him, don't serve me coffee after three so that I don't have that acid reflux when you sleep. That's the worst. I used to go, well, not take the bus. All right, me too. <laughs> I used to take, yeah, I used to take, uh, um, but I don't take, I, no, I used to take, uh, uh, coffee, when I knew they wanted to say next, coffee, chocolate, hot chocolate. Yeah, yeah. Those two things. Mixed together. Oh. I drink them separate. Oh, okay. I buy the best, uh, chocolate to make hot chocolate. Oh my God, doctor told me both of them are not soup. <laughs> I used to go to the emergency room every month 
Are you a French speaker? French. I speak French. Okay, so I can I can hear. It's can like hear yeah, 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 yeah. Canadian people. <laughs> so I Canada and lot. My sister, I have two sisters live there. So, café et chocolat. Café et chocolat. <laughs> 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 c'est magnifique. Yes, yeah, c'est bien ça. <laughs> c'est magnifique. <laughs> Et délicieux. Et délicieux. <laughs> <laughs> Each month, I, I, I went to the amazing scene in some party two times. Oh. When they get tired of me. They say, you don't like yourself. You refuse to give up coffee and hot, and cho hot chocolate. Is it a chocolat show or is it just... No, chocolat show. Chocolat show. show. Chocolat show. show. But, but the chocolate that now the doctor made you will buy, I can eat chocolate like maybe four times a month. Yes. But I have to buy the best one at the hair food store. Or the, yes, yes. Or any one. And that works? It works. Good. It works. But I don't drink hot chocolate. I don't, uh, I don't eat chocolate every day. They say five times a month, one month. <laughs> well. See, I did not want to follow those rules. No. That's why I was sick. Six, six. Oh. So now I come to myself. I ask for prayer in my church. Yes. And then and they talk to me, counselor, spiritual counselor, head. They say, Nadia, the food not going to, you know, when you give up something, it's for your hair. That's just say, I won't live longer. I'm going to have, yeah. gonna have pancreas skeleton. Oh, no. Pain, pain, oh, no. Specialist. And you know who saved my life? Dr. Arts from TV. Really? Oh, because of the thing you're drinking. Oh, because of all of the food. And then the you know how many people laugh at him, right? I mean, he, <laughs> he, you know what I mean? Like lots of doctors, doctors, doctors don't like it when they, you, when you give advice that doesn't include medicine, right? Really? <laughs> yeah. You know, I watch doctor as easy day at work and I take notes when I was suffering, suffering like that. Yeah. So specialists could not find what was wrong. Yeah. And my main problem was broken, no wheat, no barley. Low that. Ah. Uh, not too close to have the sweet things. Yeah. Plus the acid with like tomato, no tomato. Yeah, I, I'm not allowed to eat any tomatoes either. Yeah. If I if I have um pasta with red sauce too, like any type of pasta that is gluten and red and and uh, and tomatoes. Oh yes, yeah, gluten and tomatoes. Yeah, and also pizza is gluten and tomatoes, right? Not. I buy the uh, uh gluten pizza, but it's. Are you going that way or this way? All right. Well, I'll cross with you, and then I'm going this way. Oh. You cross the road with me, even though. Okay. <laughs> what is your name? Nadia. Nadia, I'm Chris. Je m'appelle Christophe. Oh, the point. En santé, Nadia. That's it. Ah, tout à l'heure. Ciao. Je vais prendre le bon of the stop. Bon, bon. Au revoir. All right, that was. Uh, Awesome beginning to uh, season six, episode 30, Chris Abraham show. Ah, uh, good morning. How are you? Good. Thank you. Getting some of the vitamin D. Yeah. And a smoke. It's a perfect morning. <laughs> Have a good day. Goodbye. So for those of you who think I live a boring, destitute, terrible life, I do, but it's populated by some amazing people from around the world. Uh, so this is episode 30. Today I was going to talk exclusively about aphantasia. Aphantasia is really, the more I realize it, is so crazy, right? I know you might think it's crazy, but think about this. Every single time you ponder into the distance and make images and memories in your head and sit there imagining or daydreaming or get lost in your daydreams or Put yourself back in the memories that you have with your families and friends. Put yourself back in the memories as a child or on your last holiday to the point where you can feel the warm sand between your toes and you can feel uh, the salty rim of your uh, fruity drink. Just imagine if that was stripped away from you and all you had was, you know, text, access to textual memories, access to, you know, what things you've done, you know, when you did them. Good morning. You know where you've been in your life. You know who you know, but you're never haunted by memories. Or you're never buoyed by memories, or you don't have access to a a giant long-term arrow that you know you can't visualize your perfect life and then, pardon me, 
have a persistent arrow at you, slowly adapt, uh, if you will. It's not the kind of thing where you have, um, what you would call it, like when I was uh, sailing with Mark from uh, Acapulco to LA uh, with uh, on sail, on wind, you have to tack. And by tacking means if you had an engine, you could just steer straight there and make adjustments based on, you know, various and sundry things. Or you could have your auto helm keep on, if you will, autonomously realigning your boat, uh, your ship, your, your sailboat to, to northeast. Or in the age of GPS, you can have your auto helm uh, bring you directly to where you're going without ever needing to be at the helm. But, and all you need to do when you uh, tack, tacking is a method of using the wind. And it means that, you know, you oftentimes get out of, get out of true with your direction in life. But because you have a clear idea of what your life is going to look like, you have this ability to constantly um, steer your boat back towards your destination, no matter how far off you go. And if you really have a catastrophic failure and you do not decide to take your life or change your plans, uh, you have at least the makings of a recovery plan based on your original goals. You might have to change your route entirely, but you have this magic ability to visualize things. And these visualizations can be, you know, I guess the word, is the word tactical? Tac, no, not tactical. It's um, tactic, haptic, can be physical, can be visual, it can be auditory, it can be, it can be aud audible in terms of hearing your voice or the voice of your mom or the voice of your dad. It can be your own voice speaking to you. And I'm told by Mark that one big sign of schizophrenia is not that you actually have the hallucinations because all y'all are having hallucinations all the time. It's that you don't know who's providing those hallucinations. Once those hallucinations become third party and you hear, you hear voices, you don't uh, produce voices or become part of kind of a, a Fantasia world or hyper Fantasia world where uh, the visualizations are allowing you to either remember things or relive things or re-experience things or be motivated by past successes or, or you know, on the other side, um, most of all, y'all, when you mean trauma, when you say trauma, you mean things like uh, when people used to talk about acid flashbacks, right? When acid flashbacks are, uh, are you know, uh, I assume because they terrorize people, those are memories that you can't control kind of effing with you or um and the closest thing i can understand is that i do have technicolor dreams and most of them are quite mundane however once in a while i'll have a stress-based uh nightmare or panic attack like in inducing experience in my dreams and i assume that's what like that's what like uh flashbacks can be for people who have trauma like i remember things and i feel i have feelings but i don't have any memory. So what I perceive as memories, I get based on feelings that I have association, associated with behaviors I did or didn't do, things I succeeded or failed at. I don't have the ability to go back and see them. Now, this might not seem like a big deal, but why don't you reconsider your life with those definitions, right? It's like pretty interesting. I don't know. Good morning. Um, can be pretty intense or terrorizing, right? Like if you don't have the access to those things anymore that you've always had, like I've never had them. So honestly, I don't know what it's like remotely, but, but uh, I think it's a little bit like losing your sight. I mean, can you imagine losing your sight? It seems like pretty, pretty mind blowing. Um, I can't even imagine. Can you imagine? Or losing your hearing like it's literally something that i see people now that i recognize it it's so thoroughly woven into culture and so thoroughly woven into uh the world that uh it's pretty pretty mind-numbing to think that uh what i used to think 
was completely poetic license. I thought that, you know, memories and people having flash, like movie flashbacks and so forth were complete, like, ham-fisted ways that movies had of, uh... Your Please scan it now. <laughs> like, awkward things that movies had to use to awkwardly explain, like, background information that, uh, would just require... The lookup of your extra care card was not successful. How thing that's this present, but... I'm gonna... I need to put a Please place your bag in the... So, like, I always thought that they were, like, really just, I thought they were really just kind of, like, heavy-handed ways of explaining background information and contextual information in novels and movies and so forth that would allow people to not have to deal with tons and tons of backstory or prologue or exposition. Turns out that it's just an analog for the way people ex understand life. I was, a. Uh, Select number of scan coupon now. Touch the continue button if finished. So, oops. your total is twenty something dollars. Please, please wait. System processing. The eating. Thank you for shopping in PDF. Please remove all bad items. Look at this. But we're going to need easy. So, who knows what all that's going to sound like. Anyway, so, I was sitting there, I've been, I've been calling up people, like my friend uh, Mira tells me that everything that I say, if it's descriptive, something will pop into her head. It might be the wrong dog, or might be the wrong car, or might be the wrong situation. But she's an extremely highly intelligent woman and has a huge, strong, hyperfantasia ability to manifest anything as if she had um, AR, not AR-15, but um, AR, which is, uh, it's not adaptive reality, but like she's got a heads up display. Um, I was watching Michelle, my, uh, my cafe crush. I was watching her kind of do her work and periodically she would peer out of the cafe window into the street. And I see chicks do that all the time, like every day. These women are working, and out of nowhere, they'll just stop, and they'll peer out of the window. Like, when I peer out of the window, I'm like, ooh, look, a car. Ooh, look, a cute pair of yoga pants. Oh, look, a tank top. Oh, look, a Porsche 911. Oh, look, a Range Rover. Oh, look, uh, a, uh, whatever. Oh, look, here comes Claudia to work. Oh, there goes Zeta out of work, or, you know, that kind of deal. And when I leaned over to Michelle and I'm like, hey, I noticed you looking out the window. Were you in your head? Were you uh, fantasizing? Were you fantasizing? Were you uh, doing your work or doing your, were you pondering? She's like, yeah, I wasn't even looking out the window. I was just pondering. Like I was completely in my head doing all the work that wasn't on the page. I was coming up with plans and all that other stuff. And uh, I have that experience too, I, but it's pensiveness. I go into my thoughts, not into my images. I don't have, I don't even have hypercard. I only have, uh, like, it's an internal dialogue, but it's not a voice. It's just words, but not spoken words. It's like I'm just, like I'm talking now without uh, vocalizing. It's basically like I'm talking to myself without moving my mouth, moving air through my larynx, using my voice box. It's not faster, it's not slower. Uh, it's just talking to myself in my head without my voice. It's not, when I, if I hit perfect pitch on a song or if I remember lyrics um, or if I can't get a song out of my head, it's exclusively based on, you know, da 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 da, da 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 da. I don't actually hear music in my head. I don't hear any version of music in my head. I don't hear chords. I don't hear uh, melodies. I don't hear bass lines. I don't hear. Um, you know, C sharp, none of that stuff. If I remember that a bird goes cheap, 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 it's because I remember that the bird goes cheap, 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 and not because I can hear the sound of a cheeping bird in my head. I, I know, I know that a caca, a, a Hawaiian rooster goes, 
Not because I can hear in my head, because I've memorized the sound of a rooster as and I think I might have confused that with maybe a peacock, which I think goes something else, or a turkey. Um, so all of my memories of sounds are are phonetic, uh, not uh, are phonetic. They're not, uh, or was it omnomnopia, omnomnopia, whatever the word is that means it sounds like it's said. Um, it's not from hearing the caw of a crow or uh, the and I remember the sound of the coqui based on the name coqui. Coqui, coqui, coqui. So, I mean, none of it ever has to do with anything going auditory in my brain or in my mind. I, I emulate, you know, the sound of a car based on what I know a car sounds like, but I only get to hear it for the first time when it comes out of my mouth, if that makes sense. So, Michelle is not peering out the window like a puppy would outside of a outside of a car or like I would. Looking out the window is only interesting as long as there's something out the window to look at. Um, I feel like I might have really disappointed my mind, my mom, because my mom and dad are very visual people and I think they moved to Hawaii and didn't feel bad about it because they thought that they were gifting me with lots of memories, but I don't take memories. I don't collect memories. If they're not photographs, which I never feel drawn to looking at ever again, because I'm not visual based, um, if I stumble on them, I'll be like, oh yeah, that happened. But there's no hunger to feed, right? So um, my parents, by taking me to Hawaii, they stole the things that they stole things to do um, from me, things that I like to do in New York City that just were not available either because we didn't have the kind of money in Hawaii or access to grandparents and uncles and aunts who could pay for things. And so it became a world where I never really strove to expose myself to majestic things because they were completely ephemeral. Like there's no holding on to them. The internet's really great because Facebook periodically will give me my memories back. Like a year ago, this happened or Google Photos or Flickr or, or uh, any of those other tools will be like, 11 years ago, you bought this, uh, this CZ75B in this amazing uh, outside the waistband leather, uh, leather holster. I'd be like, oh yeah, but there's no way that I could ever manifest, you know, the image of the Glock 23 that Mark and I bought together on my birthday, my 40th birthday. It, uh, I remember it from a picture. I know it had an OD, like, rubber uh, grip on it, and it was a Glock 23. It was black on black, uh, that kind of deal. But aside from that, nothing. Anyway, if you have any questions about Aphantasia, I'd be happy to tell you, but I'm here at the library, so I've got to get going. So it is episode 30, season 6 of The Chris Abraham Show. I'm Chris Abraham. Thank you very much, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Ah, oh, fuck. Thank you for listening to The Chris Abraham Show. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Until next time.